Hello and welcome to a new Let's Play Poorly series. This is Galactic Ruler. It's a relatively new game. I think it came out in August of 2022, so just a few months ago from the time of recording. And it is uh, based on the concepts and interface and gameplay of the Supreme Ruler series, which is currently at Supreme Ruler 2020, Supreme Ruler Ultimate. Uh, the devs, Battlegoat Studios, are in the process of making Supreme Ruler 2030, and they are. Uh, this is Galactic Ruler, is sort of the the game that they made in between that old uh, Supreme Ruler Ultimate and their upcoming Supreme Ruler 2030, and it is set in space. It is a futuristic version, futuristic take on the Supreme Ruler idea. Now, uh, I should say uh, this game is interesting it is uh like i said it's based on supreme ruler which is an acquired taste uh to a degree uh give me a moment here i'm going to adjust my audio okay hopefully that is working now a little bit better uh not clipping quite as much uh anyway so the Supreme Ruler games are complex. The interfaces are, uh, to put it mildly, difficult to navigate. Um, but what makes Galactic Ruler so interesting is that it takes the 4X space genre and kind of refocuses the attention of the game onto the planets themselves and, and to the, the ground, the land and sea surfaces and focuses a lot on actually how humans and other aliens presumably would behave in space, which is they'd land on planets and they'd be on planets and their lives would be planet based and they would still exist in a planetary mode, not just on a big overworld map. So yeah, we're gonna play a run through Galactic Ruler. I've only played a few hours of this. I am still learning the game. This is not going to serve as a tutorial series so much as it is going to be me kind of lurching from place to place trying to figure out what to do. Uh, and if in the process we learn a little bit about ourselves and about the game, all the better. The tutorial is quick, four chapters. Uh, it's actually pretty useful. Uh, it's got a little couple of glitches, but it works okay. Uh, I will say there are some bugs that are known in the game right now, and they are working on an update. And I'll, I'll introduce you to those bugs, as it were, a as they pop up, just so you can kind of, if you're playing this game, you'll you'll see the pitfalls and you can work around them. So we're going to go to new game. So you get three options here: small, medium, and large galaxy. We're going to go with a medium, and then there's military stance, economic stance, and defensive stance. This is for, I'm assuming, for how the AI and the galaxy itself as uh, overall works. Uh, so military makes the AI aggressive, economic makes them the default, and defensive stance makes them defensive. And then these other things like approval effects, resources, volatility, and random events uh, vary as well. So I'm just going to go with this default-centered economic stance in a medium galaxy. And now we can pick our factions. Oh, I should also mention, you can make modifications here if you'd like as well. Habitability of planets and so on, all this stuff. Over here we've got the various uh, species, the various races. We've got Earthers, we've got the Disciples, the Swarm, Plotters, Omniphage, the Epitaph, and so on. We're going to go with Earthers. I tend to always play Earthers. And then we're going to have other factions in the game uh, as AIs. So let's go ahead and launch. So we'll see once we get on immediately that the interface is unlike anything you may have ever seen before in a Space 4X in terms of how you interact with, with the, uh, the units how the icons work, how everything is moved around and selected. It's, again, all based on Supreme Ruler. So if you're familiar with Supreme Ruler, you'll be familiar with this. If you're unfamiliar with Supreme Ruler, you're going to be uh, staring at this like it is a donkey eating a, a pile of poo uh, until it clicks and then you're like, oh, of course, this is exactly how it's supposed to work. I can't imagine it working any other way. Sort of kind of how I feel with Universal Combat 
and how I feel about like Graviteam Tactics, which we've not uh, done on any of these Let's Plays, but maybe someday. All right, so uh, we now, let's see, so th there's a little bit of fluff flavor stuff here. Neither our scientists nor our military leaders know why the merchant ships stopped visiting our world, but without trade, we don't have sufficient resources to meet all our needs. There is also no sign of the elusive originators who have forced us to stay planet bound for so long. So that's part of the backstory of the game. Our ship production facilities have completed a few fighter craft, but we will need a surveyor if we wish to fully explore other worlds. We should add one to our space unit production queue in the defense department. Okay, so first thing I'm gonna mention is I tend to struggle against the AI governor system in the game. I can't figure out quite how to turn everything off at like literally everything off 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 so I can control it all myself and so I have not I don't bother I actually let the game I let the the governor the AI uh, <clears throat> sort of pl uh, player assist kind of do his thing and then I tell it to do things that I want it to do but I kind of I'm gonna just let it work itself out and figure out some stuff so things are gonna pop up uh, ships are going to do things that you're like, what? Where'd that come from? Yeah, it's fine. It's fine. We're not going to worry about it. Um, because, like I said, like I, I can't quite figure out how to turn everything off. I do know that there are a couple of bugs in the game right now where certain things that you tell it to turn off, the AI will continue to, to, to work on, um, which you don't want it to do uh, if you obviously turn it off. But, you know, it's fine. Um, the, you may know this about me, about how I play games. I don't really care if things are buggy. I can still have fun and still enjoy it, even if it's got glitches and even if it's a little bit salty and it's weird and does... I mean, I play Universal Combat for fuck's sake, right? I mean, come on. There's only, there's only so much I'm going to worry about. So, uh, let's see here. What we're going to do first is we're going to take a look... So this is these are uh, it's a randomized universe as, as it is the case with uh, nearly every 4x game, um, and we're going to go ahead and take a look at these interface buttons here. Um, again, very much heavily based on Supreme Ruler. I actually find the interface in Galactic Ruler to be a little bit easier to work with than uh, uh, easier than Supreme Ruler, but it is still fairly claustrophobic. Like I really wish there were longer panels of like units and things like that, which you just don't get either in this game or the previous, but you do at least get this little button here, which expands your panel out a little bit more. So uh, let's see here. So we know that there are some inhabited planets. We're on Zagion, which is uh, in, in the Uvios system. So that's here. We also know that there's aliens out here, which we haven't been to yet. We, we don't know anything about them. Um, so I, th I hit the S key to turn on supply. To, to basically it's a supply overlay and I like having it on just so that I can see the various colors of the of the um, nations that I made. It's not really identical to your empire extents, but it is good enough to, to be suitable for that. Um, all right, so and, and I should say you know like supply, Again, because this game is based on Supreme Ruler, it uses the Supreme Ruler concepts of wargaming and strategy wargaming in this 4X, which is so uncommon for games of this type. Even the, the game that is most similar to it, in my opinion, which would be uh, Distant Worlds 2, even that doesn't really worry about supply in the same way. I mean, it's got fuel issues, it's got fuel concerns and things like that, but it, it, it's still not quite the same. So, uh, ooh, once more, I have to go ahead and adjust my microphone audio. I think I'm still a little bit too loud. That's fine. Okay, so here we go. Uh, these are the unexplored planets, which we haven't seen in our system here. And obviously the question marks telling us that we haven't seen them. This is an Oort cloud. Every every system has an Oort cloud that you can't fly past, uh, which is fine. And then we can go up a level to the galaxy map. We only know Uvias right now. Like we can zoom out, but we don't see anything else. We don't know where anything is. So double click to zoom back in, and here we are in Zagion. So first thing we probably should do is check out. Oh, that's a that's not a moon. That's an asteroid. So we're gonna have to do some stuff there. I'm going to click here on my planet, and I'm going to look over here on the Recon uh, Department tab, which is in Supreme Ruler, would be the Land tab. 
shows our planet and it shows the facilities that are around it. it can hold six facilities every planet can have six planetary facilities six uh, sort of orbital facilities and you can see here there's a shipyard and an orbital station the orbital station is used as uh, a way to like control the zone around the planet the planet itself is controlled separately by the the planet surface which we'll get to it's going to be a surprise um, but it is possible in the game to own the space around a planet, but not own the planet, and vice versa. So that's an interesting mechanic, because they, they're two separate layers, and they take that seriously. So let's see here. I don't know what all of these things necessarily mean. Okay, we can go to the planet. It's medium size, oxygen atmosphere. It's breathable. If I hover over the planet, you can see the same thing. You can see the population of 686 million. And you can see there's an orbital station and an orbital shipyard. So one of the things that I want to do first is uh, take a look. Well, so this is diplomatic stuff. We'll, we'll go to the diplomatic stuff in a bit, but not just yet. And we got to look at our resources because, again, this is randomized at every start. And so various things are different. So we have four resources. We've got agriculture. We've got ore. We have energy. And then we have finished goods. So it's a little bit more complex than Stellaris, not as complex as Distant Worlds, and strangely enough, not as complex as Supreme Ruler. I kind of almost wish they'd gone the Distant Worlds route and given us a whole lot of resources to, to worry about, but they don't. So they basically consolidated all of the resources that show up in Supreme Ruler into ore. Uh, because there is still agriculture here, which is like farming and food and so on, and then energy and then finished goods, which is you, which is sort of the commercial products that you can buy and that you can sell and that helps people feel good about themselves and stuff like that. And then you've got ore. So over here, if we go to agriculture, we'll see we're producing 11 million and we use 3 million. So this is our production level here. And this is our, uh, I think this is our use, right? Yeah, so this bar here tells us our production and our production capacity. We're at total capacity right now. And we're actually using 3 million and the demand is the same. No unmet demand. Demand and so forth, all of that, again, Supreme Ruler style. It's it, very important to know and to track what your, uh, what your resources are doing, essentially, how they're being used. And then over here is your stock, which is your reserves, and your trades. Trades are done, can be done automatically, and I tend to set it up to do that where uh, there's this thing called the Merchant AI, which is an AI faction, which is not really a faction, but it's literally, I mean, it's a Merchant AI. And it negotiates the trades among all of the various factions so that you can trade with other factions without having to worry about diplomatic treaties and things like that. I mean, you can do that, but, but in a way it just works like it's underneath the it's, it's a layer underneath the political interactions uh, so trade happens whether or not you're at war and all that stuff which is how it kind of is in the real world so one thing we can do then is next up here we can look at the or so we have a production of 227 our actual use is 250 which means we're we're low so we are actually not able to make as much as we use However, there is no unmet demand. And the reason for that is, again, is because we're, because at some point in the future, we're gonna be starting to get trades in, we're gonna be able to buy stuff, and so we're not gonna actually go under. We, and we also have stock in reserve. We have 250 days worth of reserves, and we can sustain for 27 years. I think, I'm not 100% sure what the difference is there, but basically we have four. We have this green bar of ore. And there are no currently currently no trades because at the beginning of the game the merchant AI is not active. Energy over here we are producing 750. We're using 8 million, so uh, that's this is rough. Um, but we have 2.6 billion in stock, so we can last for nearly a year. So that's why we're we don't have any unmet demand. But again, we're not making any trades. Finished goods, we're producing a lot and not using nearly any of it. Uh, we have a lot of stock. So this is something that we could theoretically sell quite a lot of. 
So down here in this next tab, we can see our resource supply. So right now, sustainability is self-sufficient. We're targeting it to be neutral. We're not trying to have too much or too little. We're not trying to get more or, or drop down. And down here is the market availability. So merchant AI, I'm gonna turn merchant AI auto accept on so that it'll just do its thing. It'll buy and sell as needed. I'm not gonna have to worry about it myself. So these resource supply is independent for each of these four goods here, but the market availability is just sort of permanent. Uh, it's a toggle for everything. So here we've got 27 years of ore, target supply again is neutral, and this will change over time, and I'll, sh I'll show you kind of how that ends up happening. Uh, this is turning into a tutorial, but I swear to you it's not gonna last that way because I really don't know a lot about how this game works. I am still very much learning. Um, so finished goods again were self-sufficient, target supply is neutral, so we could go, for example, we could try to give ourselves X amount of days worth of supply or do exports, but uh, instead we're going to just do, uh, well, I will guess what target supply one because I can't seem to get to neutral again. We are rationing our finished goods, not sure why that's happening, but that's how it starts. We're also rationing our agriculture, which we really don't need to do. We're rationing our energy, which probably might be worthwhile, though I don't know. I mean, look at our stock level, probably okay. But uh, yeah, anyway, that's a thing we can do. We can also set our industrial output in each of these four, either a percentage of capacity or a percentage of demand. So right now, we are at 100% capacity for all of them, which is fine. This third button, I don't really know exactly how this works. I do know that we can load units onto uh, a cargo crate and then put it into orbit, and then we can use transport to take it places. I haven't had the opportunity to use that yet, but who knows how that works. Bulk export, this is for the merchant AI, I believe, and the auto exporting we're offering 100% of our surplus production. Uh, and, and that's just how that's going. And then finally, these are facility controls. Facilities, uh, most of the facilities for these are gonna be on the planet surface. The only one that isn't right now is the ore harvester, which we're actually gonna need. And maybe we'll start there because the ore harvesters are used to exploit um, asteroids. And if I'm, remember, if I'm remembering this right, if I'm doing this correctly, the ore harvesters get placed on the planet that is associated with that asteroid. So there's always one big, one planet on the band, on the orbital band. And then other other elements that are next to it, but are not the main piece. So uh, let's see if I can find one that gives a, a good example. Oh, no, that's, okay, yeah, here we go. I mean, this is fine. Uh, that's another asteroid. I wanna find a moon. So there's nobody with moons. Okay, a couple moons here. So Yukuri is on the orbital band. So this is the main guy. And then it's got these two moons associated with it. Those are not the central piece. They are on the orbital band, but they're not the band's main thing itself, if that makes sense. All right, so here we are. And uh, so we've got this here. So we're gonna go ahead and build a harvester. And the way you can do that, there's a number of ways you can build different things. Uh, the way I'm gonna do it right now is I'm gonna pick, okay, so we've got an hour harvester. It's gonna cost 210,000 tons of finished goods, which is uh, this stuff here, these finished goods. And it's gonna take 105 days. So I'm gonna click here, build facilities on the map. And then I'm gonna click here where it's in green and it'll build an, uh, an ore harvester that will then harvest the ore over on that asteroid. Now, be aware, you can't, you don't put the RF ore harvester on the asteroid, you put it on the planet so that the planet then uses the ore harvester to go get that stuff. Now, I could do it that way. The alternative way, um, which I'm getting used to because it actually tends to be a little bit easier, uh, is you right click on the tie, on the section, the little hex that you want to use, go here and say build or harvester and, and you can actually right well you can right click anywhere right so I can I can build here and or harvest and then do it there if I right click here I get a few other options it tells me a bit more so uh, I tend to do it on the spot that I'm gonna 
do the building, but then I still have to click, uh, which is fine. Or harvester. Boom. Now it's constructing the ore harvester. We can go back over here and click and see here. It is now constructing an ore harvester over there. Now, uh, first first bug uh, to, to note here is this facilities button, this, this little facilities list that you can put here like this. Right now, and this has been confirmed by the devs and they're going to be fixing it in a future update. It says I have orbital station, shipyard, station, and harvester that's building. I only have one orbital station. You only have one around every planet that you put one on. But for some reason in this panel and this panel only, they, the orbital stations show up twice. But you don't have to. You only have one. This is this second one is a bug. You can all you can confirm that by checking here. And also by hovering over here and you'll see station, shipyard and harvester. But we are building. So I'm going to go ahead and unpause the game. Oh, and then we've got these little things we don't need to worry about so much. All right. We're going to do that. Turn off that. And we can turn on our view map. This is just the map of the map of the system here. We have a few other uh, tabs that we'll be using at some point, but not right now. And the one I like to keep running up here is the supply chain, which just tells me what is being moved uh, from production to stock from ore to, to finish goods and kind of like how the goods are moving around. So next thing we got to worry about though is we've got, we're low on our energy, right? So oh, this is a little help thingy. To become a galactic imperial power, we'll need to achieve multiple goals, uh, require FTL, transport our forces and so on. We're gonna learn how to do that. So I'm gonna pause again. Uh, it's gonna, it takes a while to get these four X games started. so. Uh, I probably will run this episode long, um, and then in subsequent episodes I will do the half hour as usual because uh, I know people uh, get impatient, they don't like watching hour long videos. In fact, if I could do these shorter, if I could do them like seven or eight minutes, I might because that tends to be how long people watch these things for. That's okay. I'm not, I'm not saying that to be bitter, I'm just saying it's just funny that, I mean, I, I would do the same thing. I'm like watching, like, yeah, I'm getting bored, I switched off. Uh, okay. So one of the things we should we should look at though is our energy production, right? Like I said, it's production is 700K. We're using 8.4 million. We have a stock, so we're okay right now, and we can use the AI, but it would be nice to be more self-sufficient. So now, we're gonna go and, um, here's, here's the surprise. This is the planet. Yeah, again, if you are familiar with Supreme Ruler, you will, know what this looks you'll, you'll know what this is so this is obviously a a view of the planet surface and it kind of is edge to edge of course our city is here you can see here we've got uh, if i go to the recon you can see this is capital city and it has a finished goods factory two finished good factory a barracks airfield and a capital city if i click here on facilities this shows all of the facilities that are on the planet. There's my map. Now, all of these other things are different facilities on the planet's surface. Now, in another type of game, in Stellaris, Stellaris and Distant Worlds, and all of those games, and, uh, what, Intergalactic, oh god, what the heck is the name of that one? Shoot, it's a really fun game, and I might want to play it someday, and I can't remember the name of it. Um, Anyway, uh, the the planets are more abstracted. In Galactic Ruler, they're absolutely not. Uh, so when you land your military ships on an alien planet to take over, you have to Supreme Ruler yourself through. Like, you have to take things. These are actual roads. They're not playing around here. This is, this is an entire fucking Supreme Ruler game inside Galactic Ruler. So you just gotta, you just gotta, like, be in awe of this. Um, so, what we got to do is we're going to add, we're going to try to add some energy production. We're not going to get up to eight million. I mean, that's not going to happen at this stage, and that's fine. But we we want to we want to figure this out. So, let's go ahead and go to this elements uh, filter, and we're going to look at energy, and we're going to see pretty much why. <laughs> yeah, our energy levels are low because you're, what we're looking for is we're looking for these these red hot spots, right? 
agriculture, that's why our agriculture, I mean, we're a very agricultural planet. Metal is decent, but energy sources are some bullshit. So let's see, we've got a couple of spots. So anything that's got these circles, the purple circle means that there is in fact an energy facility already on, uh, on that spot. Now, some of these can have more. So for example, here, it's fully power, it's like, it's fully loaded. It can't have any more than those six, but others, uh, I'm like, watch me not be able to find one now. Um, and they're probably actually all maxed out, but you, you could theoretically add more if there were any empty slots. So what we're gonna have to do is actually find ourselves, it's an energy turnout, yeah. We're gonna have to find ourselves a fresh one. And we can see that there are some fresh ones down here. This one is uh, unused. These these are hot spots, right? So let's go ahead and build a power plant. Now this button here, this is an expansion button. You can, if you've got a power plant area that has some empty slots, you can click this and it will fill it. It'll fill out those slots. But since we don't have any, we're, we're going to have to use the build facilities on the map button. These other buttons do other things. Uh, we can turn facilities offline, we can scrap them. We're not gonna do any of that. And right now we have power plant. I don't know if there are more technologies than power plant, but I imagine that there probably are. I know that in um, in Supreme Ruler, there, you start out usually with multiple types. So I'm guessing there probably are multiple types in this game as well. I just haven't gotten that far. So we're gonna go ahead and build facilities on the map. Obviously we can't do anything in red, but anywhere that pops green, so you can see there's a hot spot, so we're gonna do that. Uh, let's see, but now one of the other thing I'm gonna to wanna to do is I wanna see, before I do that, I want to look at supply levels. Okay, yeah, okay, so this supply levels is already on. You can see supply levels are decent throughout here. We probably do wanna put a road in here just to make things uh, better, um, but let's do that. Let's put uh, some energy here. So I've done one. And now here we'll see on the recon, there's a uh, complex. Turn these, uh, turn these messages off. You can see there is an industrial complex, which has to, that's that centerpiece. And then there is a power plant that's bit being built currently. And now because of that, because I'm building that in a spot that has some empty slots. Now, if I come over here, I can actually click this a few times and it will build more. Uh, we have enough finished goods to do it, so I think we're gonna go ahead and just fill it out. I just clicked it a bunch of times, and oh, looks like we can only do the one, maybe. I don't know. I don't know what that's about. Can I do any more? No, I cannot. That's that's the best I can do right now. Uh, I'm not sure what the mechanic is on that, but there it is. So let's go ahead and build a road to get us out there. Right click, build, transport, road. Done. Building roads. Uh, we don't need to see these construction begun things because we know we did that. So we're going to turn off that topic. We're not going to receive notifications. Let's keep the game moving a little bit. Research project begun. Oh, oh, because I haven't checked my research yet. So we're going to go over here and check research. Okay, the AI has started advanced computing for us. I can come over here and look at my research is available. So this is this is the research tab. This is what's researching currently. This is the number of research facilities that we have. This is the recommendation. I can tell the AI, the governor, I should say governor, because governor, AI is either the other, other players or the merchant AI. The governor is allowed to touch research and I'm not gonna turn that off. Because um, like I said, I, I can't seem to turn everything off. So I'm just gonna leave everything kind of vaguely on. Um, here are the available researches available technologies. These are the ones that we know. Uh, and I should say these are little pull out tabs, right? And then these are the ones that we know. And this allows us to build research centers. We currently have one research center. You have a number of research slots equal to the number of centers plus one. So, and this says here, there's un, there are unused research. So we need to add one. The governor wants us to do societal health care improvements. I, I, sure, let's do that. Let's double click here just so we can kind of see what this is all about. Uh, benefits to our health care system. 
it gives us healthcare rating and social service rating, which is helps for making people happy. And then it leads to these various other technologies, which uh, down the road will will help us out. So let's go ahead and start that. And I'm going to pause real briefly while I go uh, sneeze. Actually, I've been needing to sneeze for a couple minutes now. Okay, so we are back. Mostly. Uh, allergy season is upon me. It is fall. And uh, my, uh, my nose does not like leaves. So uh, we've got some research going now. We've got these two things going. Let's turn the power, turn the power, turn the game back on again, as it were. If I wanted to, I could build some more research for centers. And maybe I will. It only takes 31,000 tons of finished goods and again I've got I've got a metric fuck ton of it um, here 500k I'm using 169 there's no unmet demand and I've got a fairly sizable stock so let's go ahead and uh, let's build another research center now this one that says there is a facility that I can build at a governor suggested location I'm guessing it's gonna be over here somewhere uh, let's take a look. Oh, yeah, there's a couple of unused spots. I'm betting they're, they're gonna be there or some or somewhere close. So let's let's see what they put it Yep, right there And there it is building We've already got a ba two barracks and two finished goods places here All right, so let's go back up to here Now first thing I want to do out here in terms of building stuff, in addition to the harvester there, is I want to build a defense uh, platform because, uh, no, that's not at all what I wanted to do there. Uh, because if shit goes down, we, we, need it. we need to do that. Oh, research goals, what does it say? Um, we have the ability to give the governor the priority of space exploration. I'm, gonna, I'm going to disagree, because I want to get to that in a minute. I'll show you how you can tell your governor to like, make certain priority decisions, um, which is what I'll do in a minute as soon as I've gotten through all these tabs. Well, more or less. So let's go ahead and build a defense platform right there. We'll build one here, you can see. It's building that platform there. We're just gonna need it because there's gonna be pirates and shit coming at us. And then over here, we have the defense building options. We have one shipyard, you get one build queue per shipyard. Uh, so that's what we'd be building and what's pending. Because uh, you can you can queue up things to build uh, and then it'll slot in as the shipyards come online and so forth. And this here lets you turn on space auto build, turn it on and turn it off. I should mention that the problem over here is that this is slightly bugged. Turning these off doesn't actually turn them off entirely. We've I've experienced, and I think the devs have have uh, commented on this. I have seen the governor build ground and land, uh, ground and air and sea forces, even though I've got these turned off. So we'll just have to kind of keep an eye on that, I guess. But the one thing I don't want my governor to do is build units because I get confused very quickly. And also the governor has a tendency to like make a lot of survey drones and I'm like, let's stop it. I don't need that many. So here's what we can build. Interceptor, a planetary engineer, survey drone. We don't have any space transports right now. And over here is what we currently have in reserve, three interceptors. Now, again, like Supreme Ruler, this game uses a reserve and deployed system, unlike most 4X space games. Our interceptors are in reserve. They're losing a little bit of readiness as they sit in reserve, but they're also not taking up energy and they're not, you know, they're not causing problems. Uh, but nothing is reserved right now. Nothing is deployed right now. I'm gonna go over here and I'm gonna build, uh, I'm gonna try to build two survey drones. Now they're pending and the, as, the, as the day turns over, let's go a little faster. As the day turns over, you can see up here, 
they will switch over uh, to start building. There we go. The first one is going to build. Because I only have one orbital shipper. Okay, here we go. Threat to our plans. This is basically saying, there's pirates out here. Yep, there's pirates out here. All right, so we've got to wait five days for the survey drones. Got our research going. Got these units. Uh, oh, let me uh, adjust space initiative. So space initiative, there's two kinds of initiative. There's unit sort of military initiative on the on a unit by unit basis. And then there's the overall space initiative, which is right here as well, this button. When you're on the, the, the uh, command tab. I can click this here. It's right now it's at none. I can go low, medium, high, and full. And that just basically gives the uh, the units various layer levels of command independence, and uh, you can they'll basically interceptors. You know your attack ships will attack things that it sees and and so on. And uh, you can set up hot spots in various places to kind of have to tell your governor to focus on those elements in certain ways, which we'll get to. But right now I'm going to leave the, I'm going to put this at at full, in fact, and we're going to actually find that I'm sure the uh, reserve these interceptors are going to come out at some point pretty soon. Would be my guess, uh, because if they are fully automated, then they might pop out and just do something. Who knows? All right, three more days for the survey drone. I'm also going to build a planetary engineer, which we're going to need to make uh, orbital stations, which we'll use to start colonizing places. All right, so we got one more day. I could speed this up a little bit. Boom, all right. We've got one now, another one is, is being built. So the there's a multitude of ways to select ships select your units and your units on on the planet and in space oh, don't need that pause again so method number one which is the claustrophobic way is to hit your deployed units and say okay I want to I want to look at this one I can click the add to selected and now it's a selected unit and it comes up in this list and you can give it your orders the second way, which is very RTS style and very familiar to most people, I think, is to drag select. And then that will select everything in that zone. That That's a unit. You can also just sing, uh, just click on a unit that you can see. But th this the, the survey drone is kind of hidden in the planet right now. So the other thing I can do is I can left click and then it will pick up, it'll, it'll show the, the units that are there and it will let me select them. So now for this guy, we're gonna go ahead and have him survey. I'm gonna have him do a survey, but first what I wanna do is now, okay. Again, bug number two. I should be able to go into the individual rules of engagement and turn on automate units so that he will automatically go do survey shit because that's what he does. Unfortunately, it doesn't work. Uh, what you actually have to do is you turn on the automate units and then you give him a kick in the ass. And then after that, he will actually go and do his thing. But first, first thing you gotta do is actually tell him, okay, do a survey. And then after that, he will automate. This is also going to work with the space unit initiative at full. I think he should also be able to do that on his own. But I like to turn my automation on for the surveyors just so they'll definitely, definitely go do their thing. So he's going to survey this asteroid here. hundred percent. Okay, so now he's running off to do the next one. I'm going to pause can hover over here. You can see it's a small asteroid. There's no atmosphere. That's what that little bit there is. It's non-landable, which means that we can't put a colony there. It's just an asteroid. It's got high ore availability and no energy availability. I'm going to turn off my little alerts from that hex. Because it's got high ore, it means that when this 
or harvester completes, it will start exploiting that asteroid. All right, let's go ahead and get going again. Watch our little surveyor go. Go, 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 go. Ooh, opportunity for trade. We still have not had contact with the merchant AI. Can we set construction of a spaceport as one of our priorities? Ooh, that's something I should mention. So I'm gonna turn that off. And we need to have a spaceport on the surface of this planet so that it can transport the goods up into space. So let's come down here and we're gonna go into, where, where do we wanna build this? Well, we can tell it to build it somewhere. So this defense, we can select here and go spaceport and have it kind of build a facility at a governor suggested location. And it can be at any one of these purple spots. It's probably gonna end up right there. Or we can do it manually. I think this time I'm gonna do it manually. Uh, because why not? Build military spaceport. I can build it anywhere along here, but it will create a complex. Don't need it to do that. So there's already a complex here. So I'm just going to have it go boom. It's going to spill the spaceport right there. And once that's done, it'll start to be able to trade. Uh, it'll, it'll be able to lift stuff, lift goods up to orbit, and then at that point we will actually start seeing merchant AI, merchant AIing, which will be great. I well, guess who's got to sneeze again? Be right back. All right. On pause. Watch our little surveyor go. And you can see these little icons here. It's very Supreme Ruler style, which is very Wargamey style, which is very much unit counters style, which I like. It's a lot of fun. Uh, feels very uh, meaty. I don't know. It's like mm, there's something, something really nice about this. Uh, I like Distance Worlds too very much, um, but uh, it is still very much a space game made by space game makers. Whereas Galactic Ruler is a planetary conquest game made by war gamers. And it's a very different vibe. I love it. So let's go to high speed. Ooh, what, what got constructed here? Uh, an industrial complex. Oh, the industrial complex for the, um, uh, for the, the, um, what's the word I'm looking for? This guy, the, for the energy. So that's completed now, and now it's going to start building the power plants. So because every every hex that can have stuff on it has to start with a centerpiece complex or a city or a village or a town, and then all of the facilities are around it. All right, we're coming over here. The surveyor's coming over here. Oh, he's going very fast. I don't need him to go that fast. Let's uh, slow you down a little bit. All right, that's telling me that there's a message here. Planetary survey complete. Let's take a look at this. It's an asteroid, no atmosphere, non-landable, high ore, no energy. We're good. What about U Ubiri? What's that, Ubiri? Planetary survey complete. Okay, let's take a look at this. Clear that. Large planet, violent, violent atmosphere, non-landable, that sucks. It's got medium ore availability and low energy availability. So we can't land here. There's no surface that we can view. Um, so we, if we want to control it, we can to exploit the, the asteroid. Uh, but it's, it's not, it's not going to be great. That's okay. Let me actually look now. Oh, take a look at this. So we have a second d drone ready to go. He's over here. I clicked the selector and now he's over there. So let's go ahead and automate him and have him go survey. Is there anything anywhere else? Uh, let's have him go down here. There, now he's gonna survey and do all of his things. We're building a planetary engineer, which will be done in about 11 days. That will let us expand 
our reach by putting orbital stations around things. I'm going to put one, I guess I should put an orbital station around here. Even though we can't land here, we want to be able to exploit the asteroid. So we're going to do that. And as we will see going forward, one of the other fascinating things about the game, again, very much like Supreme Ruler, very much like a war game way of thinking. Oop, military facility was complete. That's, I think, the spaceport, maybe, or the defense platform. Um, colonies that you land, that you create, you, they, are, they have their own governors, and that you have to have diplomatic relations with them. You can trade with them and and do various things. They are uh, they are not complete puppets. They are like uh, colonies in the real world that have independent agendas and independent needs and so forth. Um, so it's 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 pretty cool, nice and complex. That one's not explored yet, but this one over here is. It's a hostile, no atmosphere moon. Great. Ooh, uh, military, okay, planet. And then this is the auto, because this is just the merchant AI uh, help thing. Over here, we've got Yukuri, is also lame. Five more days for the planetary engineer. I'm betting I can't land here. I'm pretty sure, look at the color of that thing. There's no way I'm gonna be able to land on that. Yep, non-landable. Damn it. This uh, starting starting system's kind of shit, isn't it? That's right. We'll just game it out. How are you doing? This one looks good. Oh, okay. Izuno might be worth it. You might want to take them first. Let's pause. We have found a habitable world. Excellent. And the engineering ship. Oh, just in the nick of freaking time. Look at this. Okay. So, we built the engineer. We are not building anything else. Do we want anything else to build? Um, I have two of those. I don't need anything else right now. So, uh, yeah. All right. So, let's go ahead and... Wait, what does it say? Why does it say I have two of those? Two units in inventory. I absolutely do not have two units in inventory. I have one. That might be another bug, but that's fine. We won't worry about it. Okay, so I have selected my planetary engineer, who's over here. And I'm going to have him come down here. And he is going to build an orbital station. That's what that is. Build orbital station. It consumes the engineer, it creates an orbital station, or it can have it build an outpost, which creates an, a spaceport on the planet. But we want the orbital station first, because the orbital station gives us a zone of control and ownership of the territory, the space around the planet, which in the beginning is probably more important for us, I think, just so that nobody else will come around and mess with us. So an engineer is en route now to go build an orbital station. What's this guy doing? All right, so that's a, an asteroid that he's going to be checking out. Over here, he's about to go and look at that. But I do need to have now, I need to get another uh, engineer. I'm going to build another engineer. Because, like I said, th th that one is going to get consumed over here as soon as it's done. And we won't have him again. He just, he deconstructs himself to make the station. That one's complete. Small, dense, hostile. Great. Oh, oh, right, right. Trade's on hold. Okay, so the merchant AI isn't working with us right now because we don't have anything, we're not telling it anything, telling it to, to trade anything. So now we're going to go ahead and look at the little HAL 9000 button here, the Governor Priorities. 
These are strategic controls for the for our main faction here. We can do a bunch of different things here, like diplomatic priority, military priority, military focus, all that jazz. Resources, what we want them to do with the resources, which we can also control down in in this in this tab over here. Same with the research. All right, we can tell it. Okay, let's do high, high pressure storage next, and we can click that and do that. Defense, again, we can turn these on and off. You can have it build various space designs. Oh, that's, uh, why does it say space designs? That's not space designs. That's uh, planetary, these are planetary designs. I don't know why it says space designs. Uh, let's take a look. So because I can do, um, these are the space designs that I have here. If I come down here, I've got land designs. Uh, maybe, hang on. Oh, it says space designs, but it doesn't mean that, I guess. I don't, uh, that, again, that's a, that's a little bit of a bug. Uh, you know what, now that I think about it, I'm going to, I'm going to mention that. Right now, before I forget, I'm going to put that in the, uh, Steam, uh, Steam, uh, discussions where they, they're accepting certain bugs. I'll be right back. I've submitted the bug report. Uh, I know that there's going to be an update sometime in the next month, probably or so, uh, that will hopefully incorporate some of the fixes and changes and so forth. Uh, but regardless, so at least here we can control land, sea, and air. For some reason, space is not listed there, and then it all says space designs. That's a glitch. Not a big deal. Uh, over here, we can see the planet information for the, uh, for the population of this planet. But the thing we really want to look at is planetary governor right here. What is what can he what does he pay attention to? So here are his available priorities: resources, research, defense, and state. Each one of these is a selectable option. So uh, we could tell him to conserve stuff, consume, uh, create consumer or stockpile consumer materials, um, stockpile military look for trade opportunities, do certain kinds of research, and so on. Or we can do the governor focus of industrial, balanced, military, or manual. I'm just going to go with balanced, which gets us this. Decrease the stock level of what we have, which by selling it. Export, export, export. Go for pure science, research facilities, research infrastructure, look for trade, uh, uh, research trade technologies. Uh, or make them available for exchange, it says. Uh, trading away advantages could haunt us, it says. Look for, make a defensive military and minimize active units. So we're gonna go balanced. We will probably eventually go more military at some point. No, actually, I'm gonna go industrial focus right now. That's what I'm gonna do at the start. That's what I'm gonna do because I wanted to kind of get my trade going. Now I could do this manually here. I could set priorities manually and select a particular like different set. Or I could do it literally manually, manually, and, and focus on all that stuff by hand. But I, uh, I'm lazy. I'm not going to do that. So I'm going to tell the governor to do that stuff for me. And so he's going to start futzing with these things here, and the resource supplies, and the exports, and all that. He's going to uh, the governor is going to start messing with that stuff. Oh, and now he's scrapping units. He's scrapping some land units because uh, we did go say go defensive and don't have as many active so he's on the planet there just like throw that out throw that out throw that out we don't need it we don't need it which is which is great okay so we've got these guys going over there this one's done that one's got a breathable atmosphere evastea one we could land there it looks like that i bet you ooh, i bet you it's good i bet you it's good let's see Let's take a look at uh, agriculture. Eh, decent. Metal is good. Ooh, lot, lots of hot spots for metal, and kind of okay for for um, uh, for energy. It's a small planet, so it's not a lot going on there. Uh, where is our? Where did we put our? Uh, oh, it's up here. I think that's right. Yeah, where did we put? Oh, 
Oh, he's he's still on his way. He's still he's still on his way over to Izuno. I had forgotten that he hadn't gotten there yet. Oh yeah, check this out. Yeah, he's scrapping he's scrapping all of our labs. Uh, I don't even know what those things are. They're I think they're probably some kind of uh, armor truck something or other. Uh, he's getting rid of them. Um, but now the a merchant AI, which is considered an alien race, has been uh, encountered. And we're starting to do diplomatic exchanges, which is to say with the merchant AI, that just means trades. So we can see here, we have, we were offered finished goods and we sold agriculture and ore. And uh, I have it set as we saw, where did I have that? Ooh, where did I have that? Over here to auto accept. So I'm not even going to worry about that. Like it's just, it's fine. Go for it. So remember, we had told the governor to deplete our not deplete our stocks, but to lower our stocks and uh, stocks of stuff. And of course, we have a metric ton of agriculture here. We are producing what we use, and we have a huge stock of over a billion. We actually had more, I think, at some point. Um, so we're selling agriculture and getting a whole bunch of stuff uh, in exchange. It's not a great trade, honestly. And we could micromanage this if we wanted to, but nah, not gonna do that. Uh oh, okay, so we were going a little fast here. So you saw that re those retreating messages. That's because the surveyors tried to survey here, and they're like, "Oh shit, there's a there's a uh, there's an alien here." Uh, that's another. Uh, Merchant Exchange. And these guys are pirates. You can tell by the little pirate logo. Uh, so these are gonna be tough. These aren't a full faction. They're just pirates and they're mean and they're gonna they're gonna cause us problems at some point. So we need to grab both of our survey drones. And we've looked at that. So I'm gonna go and I'm gonna actually no, I'm not gonna grab both. I'm gonna take this guy and I'm gonna go ahead and put him into reserve. So he's gonna fly back home and just chill because we don't need him right now. This one, I'm going to waypoint him with the shift click, and then I'm gonna have him survey here. Doing that so that he'll go around this territory and not bounce into the, into the, um, into the border and then retreat. So he's gonna go up to here, just because I wanna know what's up there. Like, I don't wanna, I'm not gonna touch that, because that's dangerous. And I probably shouldn't actually do anything with these things right now because the pirates would probably get pissed off. But I do want to know what's up there, so. Done. Oh, no, 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 you're not, you're not going there. You're not going there. We're gonna have you go over here. Yeah, he's retreating because I, yeah, exactly. You're gonna go up there and then I'm gonna go ahead and put you in reserve. There, now he's just flying around. He's going up. So we're coming up on the hour for this first episode. I'm gonna wait until we've got our, this is our, um, this here is our uh, planetary engineer. Oops. Uh, let's take a look. Uh, this is the uh, Merchant AI, Planetary Survey, another unit scrapped, Diplomatic Exchange again, and we have constructed the Ore Harvester on Zagion. Let's go take a look at where that is. So that's here, and you can see this now. We can't select that, but that is the Ore Harvester dude. He's going out to Ore Harvest, which is great. So now we're going to go just watch our Planetary our, uh, our, our uh, engineer go and land here. Well, not land here, but he's going to deconstruct himself as an orbital station. Done. He is an orbital station now. And so now we have control of the space around Izuno. We don't control Izuno itself yet. I mean, we kind of do, but but we don't have anything landed here. We can see by the facilities list. Zero facilities. And 
we're going to need facilities on this planet surface to exploit it. And we're also going to need to get an ore harvester to go after Izuno 1. So let's see, can I do this now? I, I bet you I can. Let's see. Yep, there we go. I'm building an ore harvester over here to exploit that. And then finally, as we end the episode, I am going to take my newly created planetary engineer that we, we had build. And I'm going to go over here and now, well, at some point we'll be able to make colony ships uh, to put people on the planets, like in bulk. But for right now, what we're going to do in, in, in this is we're going to go to Izuno and we're going to have him build an outpost. That will consume him. He'll land and create an outpost with a spaceport on the target world. And where are we going to put it? So you right click on the planet and then you're going to find it. Ah, there's, there's the spot. You want to do it there? Or you want to do it next to uh, What did that? Why, why, why does that look like that? I don't know what that little that little star is. So we're just gonna we're gonna stick it on. Well, let's put let's let's put her here. Oh, and that was the recommended spot, I guess. So, whoopsies. So let's go and let that finish up here. Here he comes. Ooh, research. Uh, we've got the healthcare. Now we're researching high pressure storage. Thank you, AI guy. Let's go ahead and add one manually ourselves. Oh, the last one is the tank chassis. All right. Who are these guys? These are my interceptors. Oh, they're they're coming out to probably patrol this area just to keep it safe. That's my guess. Yeah. Oh, and advanced computing is done. And more scrapping of, of uh, ground troops. Let's slow you down here. So once he lands, he, he's going to land there, and then we're going to have to tell him to create the spaceport. He's exactly just going to go point outpost online. Where is he? In here somewhere. There he is. Oh, he built already. Um, sometimes for some reason they don't build into the land, and then you have to select them and tell them build an outpost, build a spaceport here. But he did. So there he is. There's my spaceport. Which means now, once I start exploiting the world, once I start adding facilities, they will be able to put them up into orbit. I'm going to have to make a storage. So we'll do that. Last thing, I swear. We're going to go ahead and build orbital storage. Nope. Build orbital storage. There we go. That means that way they'll be able to store uh, products here for to be traded off site. Because um, until then, uh, without an orbital storage, you can't actually bring anything up. You can bring stuff up, but it can't go. It can't sit. It can't be stored, and you can't. Uh, Therefore, you can't trade and you can't uh, do anything with that. But um, one thing you should note now, though, is we have a colony, which is this guy. And if I click on that, this is the colony panel. It's exactly the same as the other one. Um, but now this is my uh, colony here. And we can, if we want to, have a conversation with the Izuno Terrans. And we are going to... Uh, see what we can do. We're going to go ahead and give them... Oh, they've got a fair amount of stuff. But let's go ahead and give them a bunch of more agriculture. Let's give them a lump sum of maybe... Oh, that's a lot. 1.5 million tons? Sure, why not? Give them that. Request nothing in return. And then accept. And then they will receive 1.5 million tons, and they will be able to do that because of the orbital uh, storage. Oh, they won't be able to do it just yet. I actually have to wait. Oh, no, it's, it is going to work. Yeah, okay, transport incoming. It is going to work. Uh, if you don't have the orbit storage, I thought it, it didn't work. Um, 
and I was afraid that it would have to be completed first, but I guess something like that doesn't... I don't... I don't I, maybe I'm wrong about that. Uh, anyway, uh, so we that transport is now incoming, and they're going to have uh, they're going to have agriculture over there just so they can expand a little bit. And then we're going to have to start building cities and things over there. We're going to have to do some more on the planet over here. And next time, uh, next episode, we're going to try to do some fo focusing more on the planet side stuff because that's really where the game kind of is unique uh, in, in among 4X games in space. So, yeah, thanks for watching. See you next time.